Okay, perfect. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Johannes. Um, I'm going to present this together with Joseph. And uh, we're talking about CUDA, which is our um, approach to break the vendor lock for CUDA. And as you see, maybe other languages as well. So we'll really run through this because we only have 10 minutes. Here we go. So right now you have CUDA, and CUDA is great if you target NVIDIA GPUs, right? But what if you have other GPUs? Like you have you know, Intel or, or AMD GPUs, which actually exist. You have CPUs, you know, and, and you have CUDA code, and you can't actually target any of this. And that is kind of unfortunate, because we have a huge ecosystem of CUDA code. So people would argue, oh, yeah, you just go hippify your code. You have hip code, and then you can target two out of four. And I'm like, great. Um, so we're still leaving you know, half of them on the table. And, in Hippify, now we maintain hip code, and it doesn't really work, and we don't want to maintain multiple versions, so not a great idea. Uh, a sickle, okay, yeah, you can actually target all of them, but these, you know, er like the lines that are dotted, do they really work that well? Is it like, is there not a vendor behind it that kind of drives these languages and might make sure that they really work well on one of those architectures? I'm not sure. I'm just like putting it out there. Um, so, but again, we have to rewrite our CUDA code, which might be a non-starter to begin with, because we have this huge amount of CUDA code, and we don't want to rewrite it. That's just it. So, then some people work on OpenMP, and if you, if you know me, if you see me, I work on OpenMP, so OpenMP is kind of a thing for me. But we don't even have a way to go there from CUDA code, so there is no tool that translates. And again, all of the negative parts of the translation would come in, so I'm not working on a tool to translate. Uh, but at least we kind of can target all of those uh, architectures. So that is kind of a benefit of OpenMP, right? So what I've tried to show here is we have this source language fragmentation with now every, like it's kind of hip to come up with a new CUDA, right? So every vendor presents their own solution to this problem. Uh, you don't really know if those solutions are really going to be performance portable or just portable. And then um, you don't want to port your code in the first place. So what are you doing? So what we, try to, what we try to address is we try to say, okay, OpenMP is a good solution to target different things. How does it do that? Clang translates OpenMP, the pragmas, what you think of OpenMP, into like OpenMP runtime calls and LLVM IR. And that level is kind of agnostic. So why don't we implement CUDA on top of that level and then benefit from all the backend stuff, right? And then we can also inter interoperate it with OpenMP. And we can potentially interoperate it with HIP and SQL if that code exists out there. So we can kind of unify everything on one level and go from there to get all of the backends. Okay, how do we do this? Hey, I'm Joseph Huber, and I'm going to see if I can get through how we actually accomplish this real quick. So uh, first, this is a really high-level overview of what a CUDA compilation for offloading looks like. We have our CUDA source and some headers. We run it through Clang, and we get a device object, and together with some you know, vendor libraries, we get a device executable, and then we take the host side of the compilation and embed the device executable in the host so then we can run it. And now this is how you get something that runs on an NVIDIA GPU. So OpenMP is much of the same, except we have a OpenMP runtime on top of it, which is uh, valid for all GPUs we target, and additionally this libOMP target runtime, which can basically target whatever GPU you want as long as it's present in the code. Now what we really want to do is to compile CUDA through the OpenMP offloading tool chain. But it's easier said than done because we're you know, glossing over it here, but a lot of the compilation steps, the embedding and linking and all this stuff is fundamentally different between CUDA and OpenMP. So how can we unify this so we can get what we want? Well, first off, we invented this new offloading driver, which is basically designed to be language agnostic that can compile between both CUDA and OpenMP and also link them. And this is a, has a more classic, you know, linked object code design and allows us to both compile OpenMP and CUDA together. So next, we had to create a new novel embedding scheme that was also language agnostic and also allowed OpenMP to do the same, you know, multi-device execution that CUDA can do if you want to target, you know, multiple architectures. Um, now, the previous two steps kind of outlined the infrastructure we needed to change, but now we actually need to change the compilation itself. And we primarily did this through the header libraries that CUDA imports to define all of the, uh, you know, API wrappers and keywords and such. So 
Um, we looked at the benchmarks we were targeting and found you know, a few lists of the high-level CUDA API calls we wanted to use and basically just changed the wrapper to transform them to OpenMP calls. And we did something very similar for the CUDA built-in calls. And this allows us to basically take the compilation and essentially just on the fly turn CUDA code into OpenMP code by mapping the CUDA versions to the OpenMP versions without any interface with the user. So finally, what we had to do is make the intermediate layer uh, target independent as well. So normally if you compile for like CUDA, you have the CUDA math library or AMD, you have the AMD math library. We had to generate a new one that was um, independent between both of them so that we can then uh, basically retarget whatever we want when we actually run it. So now we have all this together, we can take you know, all of these sources and compile them to basically OpenMP and use the existing OpenMP infrastructure. And what you get from that is a simple portable CUDA interface that's interoperable between all these other languages. You, know, you get access to all of the existing OpenMP features that give you like debugging or performing or all these other nice things. And the user didn't really need to do anything. You know, they just had to use our compiler and our wrapper libraries and they got access to all of this. So I will hand it back to Johannes to talk about the evaluation. Perfect, thank you. So uh, we did an experiment here where on the right you see a Power9 system with a V100 NVIDIA GPU on the, uh, on, oh, sorry, on your left. On, on your right you see an AMD system with an MI50 and we, comp we compared three compilers. Uh, on the left, on the V100 system, the input is always CUDA code. On the right, the input is HIP code, except for our compiler, where it's CUDA code. Oh yeah. So vendor CC is either the NVIDIA or the AMD compiler for the respective language, okay? This is what the vendor ships. Um, Clang can compile both CUDA and HIP, so we compared it to Clang and have a like, more realistic baseline because we're Clang-based. So maybe there is like, a huge difference between the vendor compiler and, and our baseline, so we have that in there as well. You see that in this benchmark here, XSBench, they perform pretty much the same. Uh, XSBench is like um, s nuclear simulation stuff. And then you get CUDA on CC, which again takes CUDA on both of those pictures and performs better. Why does it perform better? We looked into it because uh, we use the driver API to allocate memory, which is the you know um, uh, CU alloc ver like versus uh, CUDA malloc, and that just performs better. We don't really know why, but that is kind of a low-level artifact that we're not really claiming that we did. Okay, oh, yeah. but let's look at some other benchmarks. So this is RS Bench, which is similar to, like, computes the same thing as XS Bench, but it's uh, compute bound rather than memory bound. And we're actually performing a lot better. Why is that? Because we introduced this two-step compilation with an intermediate layer that is mostly target independent in a, a libm for GPUs. Because of that, we can actually perform target agnostic math library optimizations. And it turns out, in RS Bench, you can hoist a couple of math calls out of a hot loop, which gives you a huge speed up. And we're never able to do that in all of our you know, HIP or, or Clang inputs because we directly went into this vendor land of NV sign or HIP sign or whatever. So keeping LLVM sign around gives you a huge speed up here. So LibM alone for GPUs is a huge win. And then we have another benchmark, uh, TRIA. Uh, which is a stream benchmark, which basically tries to overlay compute and memory transfer, and we do a lot worse on AMD when we use the CUDA input. Why? Because our AMD plugin at this point, uh, when we did the evaluation, wasn't able to actually use streams. It, like the, the CUDA version uses streams, and we effectively sequentialized them. We remedied that by now, so the new numbers will look different, but if we, if we don't have a feature, obviously we can only kind of implement it the you know, slow way. But we can implement it. I mean, we can implement everything, right? And then uh, that was pretty much all of our talk, and I think we're good. Thank you.